Welcome back, everyone. Now, earlier in the show, we were joined by the incredibly brave Amy Aston, yeah. who was recently hospitalised due to severe eczema symptoms. She's been raising awareness of topical steroid withdrawal. Eczema is something which affects so many people, and we've been inundated with calls uh, about it today. Uh, dermatology... I always say that wrong. Dermatology. Dermatology expert George Moncrief is here to take calls. Sorry, Hi, George. George. That's all right. At least you got my name right. <laughs> That's the important right. thing. That's the important thing. Let's go to uh, Tracy first of all. Good morning, Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi, good morning. Oh, now, thanks for joining you're us. You're using a new drug. Uh, what's the new drug you're using at the moment? I haven't started it yet. I've actually worked what I've called to get advice if he would advise I use this drug, methotrexate. Right. So tell us your story then. Uh, last year, I had an allergy uh, reaction. I went and was given oral steroids. Then I was given steroid creams because it seemed to I have withdrawal effects from that. Um, then I stopped using Topic in January, and I've went into the withdrawal the same as what Amy was with the weeping, and um, as you can see from the picture. So I've now been back at a different dermatologist who's advised either methotrexate or light treatment. So, OK, thank you, uh, Tracy. You've got a picture of you uh, there, George, and if you've seen that picture. But, it looks um, really yes, sore. Yes, it looks terrible, doesn't it? Poor soul. And that, that was protopic, you say, that you were on back in January, that you then had to stop that too? Was Is that it right, Tracy? Pro protopic. Yeah, I was having withdrawals from using that as well. Really? OK, so protopic is a non-steroid. It's an immune modulator ointment. Um, that I'm surprised. I mean, it can certainly cause some stinging when you put that onto the skin for the first 10 minutes or so. But that would be a, a very intelligent thing to have tried if your skin could tolerate it initially. But here you are, you've got this really quite widespread rash. And whether this is topical steroid withdrawal or whether it's um, severe eczema, it, it's hard to be sure, but it's looking into the spectrum of topical steroid withdrawal syndrome to me. And so steroids are not going to be your answer, are they? And that's why your GP, your, your dermatologist has recommended you go on to this second-line agents um, which to consider, which include ultraviolet light therapy, which is great, um, and even natural sunlight therapy, provided it's non-burning, would be helpful. But it's not going to be enough, I don't think. Um, or you could have... Um, in methotrexate, usually by mouth and occasionally by injection, and then there are alternatives as well, azathioprine and cyclosporine. Now, these are all pretty toxic drugs, but they're very good for eczema. How good they're going to be for topical steroid withdrawal is unknown, but they will definitely get the eczema under control. Methotrexate isn't without its problems. Um, we need to monitor blood tests carefully, keeping an eye on your bone marrow function. I've never seen a problem with that, but it can certainly happen. And it can certainly also affect the liver. So we need to keep a close eye on the liver function. Again, I've never actually seen a problem related to oral methotrexate. Generally, you build the dose up gradually. I wouldn't take it if you're pregnant, by the way. Um, that would be an absolute contraindication. But I think methotrexate is a very, very sensible second-line agent to, to use to see whether that keeps any eczema under control. And if it did, that's great. If it doesn't, then you would have with this degree of eczema, definitely have grounds to talk about biological treatments, um, which our earlier um, guest was, was about to embark on. Dupixent, for example, which is a, an, a biological that really attacks the, the proteins, the what are called interleukins, that are raised and abnormal in atopic pattern eczema. But I would say, provided you're not pregnant and you're prepared to have fairly regular blood tests, um, methotrexate is a very, very sensible next step for you to be considering. And um, don't expect miracles straight away. You need to build the dose up gradually. It's only when the dose gets up to a, a, a decent dose, usually around about 15 milligrams, I wouldn't put you straight on to that, um, that you might then, once you've been on that for a bit, start to see some improvement in the eczema side of it. We just don't really know how to manage topical steroid withdrawal, though. George, what timeline would that be if you're, you're building that dose up gradually before yes. Amy, uh, Tracy rather might see some... Reasonable to anticipate around about two months. Two months. From starting it. Tracy, I hope that's, um, I hope that's given you some peace of mind. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I'm not sure what to do. I've obviously got two young kids to try and look after, which I've not been able to, so I need to try and get something to help me. Absolutely. Well, listen, so this is affecting your life, isn't it? It's actually affecting your day-to-day -day life. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, mm. yeah. Well, I hope that's helped, um, Tracy. Best Good of luck. luck with it. Good luck, darling. Uh, Lucy has emailed in, nothing seems to help my eczema around my mouth. We have a picture, George. For nearly two years, I've had red patchy areas of eczema that get dry. It briefly spread across my whole face. Now it just sits around my mouth. I've used steroid creams. Nothing seems to get rid of it long term. Any specific treatments you might recommend? Well, this is related, but um, subtly different. I suspect this is something called perioral, or sometimes called perioroficial dermatitis. And it's a particular variant of eczema that is driven and caused by steroids. I've never seen it in someone who hasn't put a steroid on their skin, often inadvertently. They might have been treating their child's eczema and a little bit of steroid residue just gets onto their face. Wow. Um, or they may have been using something they didn't realise had a, a very weak steroid. Even very, very weak steroids can trigger this. And the steroids are anti-inflammatory, so initially they will make it a bit better, but then they just make it worse and worse. And often I see people going up the strength of steroids from mild to moderate to potent to strong and super strong steroids to keep this under bay. But it's the steroids that are driving this. And so you need to stop the steroids. And if you stop them, it might initially flare a bit. The treatments that work include the product we were just talking about with our earlier guest, um, Protopic, a topical immune modulator. And your GP might well be prepared to prescribe that for you. They work usually very well. Um, and there's another one called Elidel, or Pimetcholimus is its proper name. And that can help to keep this at bay and control it. The thing we've used over the decades, though, that works very nicely is an oral tetracycline, the sort of tetracyclines we might use for acne. Um, and interestingly, unlike an acne where you need quite a high dose, very low dose tetracyclines work. So even just one tablet of oxytetracycline a day can be enough to control this. And it controls it usually fairly quickly, gets it under control in a week or 10 days. But it has a habit of coming back if you stop. And so you may need to have repeated short courses of oxytetracycline. So I give a patient 100 tablets and say, get on with it and take one a day, um, get it under control. Um, when it's under control, you could stop. But if it comes back, start again. And usually after a few months, it burns itself out, provided you stop the topical steroids. It's the topical steroids that are driving this. You know, I've even seen it from people using inhaled steroids for their hay fever or their asthma trivial amounts of topical steroid on the face. It occurs around the mouth, often down the side of the mouth, um, just around, sometimes with clearing of the vermilion border, which is this, just the edge of the lips. But you can get it, it's called orificial, because you can also get it around the eye. You get, and there are two patterns. There's a sort of more acne form pattern where you get little papules and little bumps and pustules. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a more eczema form, which is what this looks like okay. to me. So I think this is peri oral or perioroficial dermatitis driven by steroids and stopping the steroids in the long run is, is, the, is the remedy for this. Okay, there you okay, go, Lucy, thank you. Well, we're going to Nottinghamshire now. Natalie's on the line. Good morning, Natalie. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Tell us your story. Um, so my, my six-month-old um, daughter, she's got quite a bit of eczema on her chest and her neck area, uh, especially her creases. We, we cream it with the cream that the doctor advised, which was zero cream, but it doesn't seem to stop her scratching, which keeps her a lot awake at night. Mm. Just wondering if there was anything else we can kind of use on it to, 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 to stop her scratching so mm. much. Poor thing. Well, I mean, this does look like fairly straightforward, infantile, flexural, atopic pattern eczema, which is great news because um, incredibly common, about one in four children under the age of five have this. Um, it often starts on the face and then settles into the flexures, like around the neck, but can and in the front of the elbows and behind the knees. And mm. it can be very itchy, as, as you say. So my treatment for this would be, first of all, really avoid getting any soaps, detergents, shower gels, shampoos, bubble baths on her skin. All of those mm -hmm. will definitely aggravate it. Ideally, wash her skin with a, an emollient soap substitute. You can buy those over the counter if you want, but um, it doesn't matter which emollient you're using, that'll re-grease the skin 
and look after the surface uh, environment perfectly. So wash her only with an emollient. It'll make her a bit slippery, like an eel, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, she can have a bath with an emollient in the water and that'll be doing her a world of good. So the ones I like include things like Apriderm range, there's Apriderm um, cream, there's Apriderm um, colloidal oat and so on. Um, so a simple emollient to, to wash her with. Then when she gets out of the water, that's a great opportunity to trap that moisture in the skin. So put a, a quality emollient on her skin. Now, if, you, if the itch is a problem, something that contains nicotinamide is good, because nicotinamide, which is bit, vitamin B3, topically has anti-itch properties. So those include things like Adex gel, which is made by Dermal. Um, that contains 4% nicotinamide, and that your GP can prescribe, and that's a really nice... And it should, should help the itch a bit. Um, another one you can buy over the counter that I particularly like is Lipicar Balm, AP plus M. You can't prescribe that, but it's, it's a particularly good one. This does need a topical steroid. I would definitely be going in with a topical steroid here. Um, a fairly mild one, hydrocortisone 1%, which should be all right. I, maybe initially for the first week I might use Umivate ointment once a day um, and then um, hopefully taper down even just to hydrocortisone and then stop. OK. Natalie, uh, you Natalie. might want to watch this back because there's a lot of information there. George, thank George, you so thank much you for so joining much. us. So that was brilliant. Thanks. So really good. appreciate your help today. Uh, coming up next, the coupon kit.